So about a year and a half ago, I did a review of this guitar. It is the Hadian EA100NA. It was the first video I did when I brought my channel back and I kind of felt the need to circle back to this guitar because it's been over a year now. So what I want to do is dive into the pros, the cons, and what you can expect if you purchase one. Let's dive in. So right out of the gate, I know the most important thing is how this guitar sounds, and that's what you guys really want to hear. So what I'm going to do is do uh, you know four or five different songs, give you guys a good feel for how this guitar actually sounds and plays, and then from there, I will do the pros, cons, specifications, and everything in between. I purchased this guitar from Rondo Music. I think it was a little bit cheaper at the time, but currently it's available for $199. Keep in mind, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. Completely unbiased review of this guitar. So taking a quick look at the specs, the body is a two-piece solid spruce. The sides and back are mahogany, the neck is mahogany, and the fingerboard itself is rosewood. Of course, here is the built-in tuner and three-band EQ. I'll try to get you a little closer up picture of that as well. As far as the pickup goes, it doesn't say anywhere in the specifications. I would presume it's a piezo pickup, if I had to guess. Outside of that, the tuners themselves are just kind of the basic open tuner that you'll find on a classical guitar. They are nothing special, unfortunately, but they are functional. And lastly, the body itself is two inches thick, so you can see it's, it's fairly slim, and it makes it very comfortable to play. You almost feel like you're really playing an electric. The neck radius on this guitar is 12 inches, which is the same as a Les Paul. I think Martins are generally around 16, if I'm not mistaken, so... Um, this, it, it feels like a little bit more comfortable classical guitar to play. So let's go ahead and dive into the pros of this guitar. All right, so the first pro of this guitar is obviously the price, right? I mean, it's under $200, and let's be realistic. If money were no object, I'd be doing a review of a Godin right now. But money matters, and at under $200, it's kind of hard to ask for more guitar than what you're getting with this. Particularly when you look at the competition, there's not a lot for this style of guitar, so price is definitely a plus for this guitar. And number two, the finish. I was pleasantly surprised to see how nice the finish was on this guitar. I thought it was a really, it's a really good looking guitar. There's nothing about it that makes it feel or look cheap. Number three, as you heard, I think it sounds really good. Like this guitar has a great tone for what it is. It really gives you a good classical nylon feel to it, and it's just a different approach to playing acoustic songs. And it's nice to be able to have that without spending a fortune. Number four, it's got a built-in tuner and three-band EQ, and this works particularly well when I was jamming with some friends and whatnot. I was able to make minor adjustments right on the guitar without having to go over to the amp, so it's a nice added feature. 
And number five, the action was pretty good right out of the box. Wasn't too high, wasn't too low. Um, there were fret issues, and I'll get into that in a moment, but the leveling was not one of them. There is a little bit of fret buzz present now, particularly when using a capo, but that's likely due to the fact that I switched the gauge string on there, and it's probably thrown off that initial setup a little bit. To be fair to Haiti, and right out of the box, the action was pretty good. Let's be real for a minute, there's no guitar out there under $200 that's not gonna have some cons. And I'm gonna go through those right now, along with what I did to fix them. The first and biggest con was sharp frets. The frets on this thing were like wildly sharp. It was almost like whoever cut those frets just cut right along the frets and just moved on. They weren't filed down at all. They were very sharp out of the box. I did play it for a while and I finally got around to fixing it and what a difference it made. And how you fix that is simply with a file. You just have to take that file over the edge of the fret and file down those sharp edges that were missed. Very simple to do. It's one of those things where you can find a lot of videos on YouTube. I don't have any on my channel. I've never gotten around to doing a video on it per se, but there are a bunch of videos on how to fix this. Just takes a little bit of time. I think it probably took about an hour of time to tape the fretboard off itself and actually go through with a file and do both sides of each fret. Again, something that's necessary and something that is skipped on a guitar of this price point just to save cost. The second issue I had is that the frets themselves are actually kind of dull and were a little bit rough. This was again a simple fix. If you're going to be filing down rough fret edges, it's very simple while you're doing this or when you're done doing this to polish the frets themselves. I used the, uh, the Dunlop, the 8000 grit. It didn't take much. It shined them right up and kind of did away with the dullness and roughness of them and ended up uh, you know, making them really, uh, really kind of stand out. And third, the nut needed to be slotted. Again, something simple to do. What was happening was, particularly with the high E, the nut wasn't slotted wide enough. So essentially, the string was getting pinched in there and causing the string to mute a little more than the other strings. This was a simple fix. All you had to do was take a narrow file and run it through that slot a little bit just to widen it so that it wasn't deadening or muting that string. So the bottom line with this guitar is I think it's an incredible value for the money, particularly for someone who's looking to get into this type of guitar without really wanting to break your budget. You just have to understand what you're getting, and what you're getting is a guitar that's going to need some additional work once you get it. If you're okay with that, this would be an awesome guitar for you. If you're the kind of person that that guitar's got to be perfect right out of the box, you probably want to look elsewhere and you probably want to spend a little bit more money to get something that's finished up right. So if you're curious about any of the products that I use to help clean this guitar up or work on the frets, I'll be sure to leave some affiliate links in the description of this video. Just keep in mind, I may earn a small commission from it. And if you're looking for some direction on how to clean up a guitar or polish some frets, be sure to check out this video right here where I run through all of the different things that I do to get a guitar cleaned up and get the frets polished. Hope this video helped you out and as always, thanks for watching.